So, okay. So shall we go ahead and uh, start the introduction? Okay, so welcome everyone. And uh, uh, so uh, Florin uh, is gonna continue his lecture on uh, F rational rings and rational similarities. Go ahead. Thank you, Lingchuan. All right, uh, welcome back everybody. Um, I'm gonna continue where I left off last time as I was looking at what I uh, managed to present and uh, what I prepared in the notes that I posted. I realized that perhaps I got carried away with uh, how much material I have. So um, I'll try to cover most of it. And um, uh, for parts that I don't manage to get to, um, you will find them in the notes. Um, it's a long and interesting theory. And uh, uh, I just uh, uh, find it, uh, I just had a hard time uh, choosing what to, to, to pick at the expense of other results. So. All right, so uh, last time we're in the middle of a, of a theorem that was basically trying to explain why if you have an equidimensional homomorphic image of a Macaulay ring, um, the assumption that one system of parameters gives you a tightly closed ideal implies that every system of parameters gives you a tightly closed ideal. And um, we proved a, a, a number of um, uh, Parts. So if you have the, 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 the one ideally stated closed, then uh, we, we manage to prove that uh, the ring is Cohen Macaulay. And then every ideal uh, consisting of a subset of this uh, given uh, system parameters is also tightly closed. So uh, now we're trying to show that if um, we have another system of parameters, y1 to y to d, where D is the dimension of the ring R, then uh, the, the ideal degenerate is also tightly tight closed. All right, so let's, uh, let's see how that goes. We're going to take the powers of the original system parameters, indexed by T, and uh, first we're gonna show that these ideals are tightly closed. Okay, we, we know that uh, I itself is tight closed, but now how, well, what about this I sub P? Well, we're gonna use a start, rather standard arg argument um, in tight closure. If an ideal that is M primary is not, uh, that if the tight closure of it is not equal to itself, it means that this, uh, Tie closure strictly contains the original ideal. Therefore, when you look at the circle mod the ideal, it has to intersect the circle in a non trivial element. And um, therefore, we can find uh, there exists an element V in the tie closure, which is non zero in the circle of R mod IT. Okay. Um, but now, because it is consists of the powers of the original axis, we can write the elements in the circle in the form x to the power t minus one times u, where u is non-zero in the circle of r mod i, the original i. Okay. Um, So now let's write what it means that V is in the type closure of I T star. It means that there exists C in R zero such that C times V, but instead of V we have um, this form of the element, okay? So this, this element belongs to IT power bracket Q for Q large enough. Okay. So if you isolate the part about C U to power Q, you get it to belong to the following 
colon ideal okay and using the coma coli property because of the, the x is from a regular uh, system of parameters therefore a regular sequence you can uh, by using inductively the regular sequence property you get that this colon is containing x1 to the power q xd to the power q so now therefore u itself is going to be in the diclosure of i which is i so that gives a contradiction because uh, u is supposed to be non-zero the image of u was supposed to be non-zero in harmona okay all right so therefore all these ips are tightly closed all right so now how do we make the the the, the passing to to j well there is a t large enough such that it is inside j and now both of these uh, ideals are generated by system parameters that are regular sequences because we already proven that uh, the ring R is called Macaulay. Therefore, uh, we can apply the following exercise, which is stated in my uh, in my notes, and I'm not going to state it here. It's a you know it's a rather uh, I would say it's a non-trivial exercise. If you have an inclusion like this of uh, two ideals generated by regular sequences, there exist an injection and the exercise in the notes explains how the injection is obtained um, r mod j into r mod it okay like this so you can find a, an injection like this which is given by multiplication by a, a specific element all right so uh, if you take an element in j star then The image of X under map above is gonna go in IT star, but that's the same as IT, which in turn implies that X, because the map above is an injection has to be in J, okay? So uses this little, little trick, I'm gonna, uh, once we uh, start connecting f rational rings to local cohomology, I'm going to give you an alternate way of uh, of justify this part that doesn't involve uh, um, this exercise. But I, I would I wanted to mention the exercise because it's stated in the notes and it's uh, it's a useful thing to know. All right, so that's the uh, passing to an arbitrary system of parameters. So therefore. Now we know that if a ring is an equi equidimensional homomorphic image of Poe Macaulay rings and admits test elements, it's enough to check the, the fact that one system generated by uh, one ideal generated by a full system of parameters is tightly closed to, can, to conclude that the ring is irrational. So that's very useful in practice. All right. So speaking of practice, I think it's important to maybe get a sense of what would you mean to check that if you have a F rational ring, okay? It would be interesting. It's interesting to realize that in fact, uh, things are not necessarily trivial even for, for nice examples, okay? So let's take this example. Uh, was discussed before in the context of uh, strong F regular rings by um, Lin Chuan. The hypersurface is x squared plus y cubed plus z fifth. And I want to show that the ring is irrational if the characteristic p is greater or equal than seven. All right, so notice that the partial derivative of the hypersurface is 2x. And I made an observation uh, at the beginning that uh, the Jacobian ideal over k gives us uh, test elements. So two is invertible if the characteristic is greater or equal than seven in, in the field k. So x is two, two x would be a test element, therefore x itself would, would be a test element for R. Okay, so this is actually, I, I, I would notice, first of all, that this is non-trivial, okay? I'm using something, uh, a theorem 
of Huxley here in Ikea based on Lipman and Sate results that is not trivial, but is very useful. Otherwise, it would be, I think it's kind of difficult to check uh, elementary that this uh, example is a version. All right, so it would be useful to localize this. I don't want to deal with, because uh, uh, this is a non local ring. So, um, one can actually notice that this is an isolated singularity. So you just need to check that the, the localization of the homogeneous maximum ideal is irrational. And if you can complete, you complete that, it's enough to check that this local ring, uh, hey, a power, uh, formal power series of in XYZ over K, module of the same hypersurface is irrational. Okay. So we're using the same trick as before. We're trying to show that this ring is irrational. If the type of y, y and Z form a system of parameters on this ring, if you mod out by Y comma Z, you get a dimension zero ring. And uh, uh, it's easy to see that this original ring has dimension two. So Y Z form a system of parameters. So if the type closure of Y Z as an ideal is strictly bigger than the original ideal, then an element in the circle has to be in there in the type closure, but the circle Modulo yz, it's easy to see that it's generated by x. Therefore, you just need the, the element x if the tie closure is non trivial, uh, x will have to be in that tie closure. Okay, so this is a you could say that this, ele this argument is a little elementary because it involves circles, but you know, a, uh, it's elementary, but it's not necessarily obvious if you've seen it for the first time. So, um if this ring is not irrational, then X will have to be in the tie closure of YZ, okay? Since we know that X is a test element, it will have to follow this relation, okay? X times X to power P has to be in I to power P comma Z to power P, okay? So how do we um, uh, get a contradiction here, all right? So this is X to power P plus one which because P is odd can be written as X to power two K, which is X squared to power K. And this is the same as minus Y cubed minus Z fifth to power K, okay? And, uh, you know, if you take minus one out, this is minus one to power K, and then you have a sum from zero to K, some binomial coefficients, um, and y to power three i, z to power five times k minus i. Okay. Um, all right. So now, the, because two um, k is p plus one, it means that k is less than p, and. Um, um, we don't need to worry about the, the binomial coefficients. It's at never zero. So we need to look at the, these terms. We have a, a sum of terms like this. Okay. Um, now you can actually, a, sh a short argument tells you that we have a sum of terms like this, right? But this, you can regard this relation in KYZ, in fact. And if a sum of terms like this has to, it's in this ideal, because this ideal is monomial, then all terms have to be there. And uh, a little exercise shows that there exists an I such that um, both Maybe I should just say J, 3J is less than P and 5K minus J is less than P, okay? So there is a little uh, you know, numerical exercise if you want uh, to, to show. So there will be at least one term not in I power bracket, uh, an I power P comma Z power P, okay? So uh, this is basically a, a, a direct proof of the fact that that hypersurface is uh, Irrational. Okay, it uses a few tricks and uses the fact that X is a test element and then um, a little argument uh, with numbers. So you can try to, to reproduce this. And um, so that tells you that X is not in the tight closure of YZ. So that tells you that YZ is tightly closed. Okay, so that makes it 
an ever rational ring because we checked it for one system of parameters and that's enough, okay? Um, you can redo the computation to see what happens if you have, uh, sorry, if you have this ring. Well, I can actually argue that this is a little easier when um, characteristic is greater than five. So here you can actually show that this ring is not irrational. In some sense, it's easier to show that something is not irrational if you have a get good guess about what the element will be in the type closure. For example, by looking at cycles of elements modulo the system of parameters, then you have you have a good guess about what should be in the type closure, and then you you can try for the C, which is an important part uh, in type closure theory. The the C, the element C, the multiplier that it is in R naught. You can choose whatever is convenient to prove that you have a type closure relation. Uh, the other exercise, the original exercise that show, uh, you need to show that the ring is F rational, then um, it's a little harder because uh, you don't know what C you should use. That's why it's very useful to know ahead of time what uh, would be some test elements in the original. All right. So now, to, uh, after I gave you a flavor of uh, what computations, direct computations mean. Uh, in tight closure, I will uh, hopefully have time to get back to this and show you that this result, the, this ring can be uh, obtained as a consequence of some more sophisticated results that would, would be shorter proofs, give shorter uh, proofs that uh, the original, the first ring is irrational and the second ring that I just wrote is not irrational. All right, so like I would like to move on now and, and talk about a, a different characterization of irrationality. Uh, which is called strong rationality, which is due to Velas. Um, all right, so let's see. So what's strong rationality? Uh, I mean, need some notations. So if, if in this uh, part, we're gonna take the, the ring to be reduced to begin with and the Ethereum. And for an element D, not in any minimal prime, uh, I'm gonna have this map, uh, denoted by phi index d comma q that sends one into d to power one over q. So basically the map, the map sends little r into d one over q times r. And we say that this map is quasi split if it's injective and if it stays injective when you tensor with r mod i where i is a parameter idea, okay? And now what's this notion of strongly irrational? So we have rational says that for every element D not in any minimal prime, you can choose a Q zero such that all these maps, phi index DQ are quasi split as soon as Q is greater or equal than Q zero, okay? And we're gonna show that this is a, a, a characterization, a different characterization of every rationality, okay? The first uh, part of the theorem, uh, that I'm building towards is to show that strong F rationality implies F rationality. Okay, so that's a little easier. The converse, it's it's a little harder. So let's let's see why a strongly F rational ring that is a homomorphic image of Coen Macaulay is F rational. Okay, so you can make a quick reduction and assume that R is local. And um, get to the case when i is generated by a system of parameters okay so now assume that you have something i i want to show that this ideal i is tightly closed that would be enough right so uh let's take an element in i star what do we have that there exists an element d in r naught such that c x sorry d x power power q belongs to i power bracket q Okay, well, if you take Q roots here, it means that D to one over Q times X is in I. Expand it to R one over Q, okay? Well, but we know that this map is injective. Because that's the definition. Is injective for large Q. That's the definition of uh, strong rationality. 
So that means um, that X has to be in I, okay? If D1 over Q times X is in I, I'm sorry, I uh, yeah, it should be. Okay, so this is the, an immediate observation. Just going back here to the definition of strongly rational, if you compare that with rational, rational says that if you have something like this, so rational says that for every X for which that happens, there is a D such that that thing implies that X is in I, okay? The quantifier formulation for strongly rational de definition says that it changes the point of view. It says that for every D, you can find a Q0 such that a relation of the type that I underline here implies that X is in I, okay? So it, it, in some ways, the tight closure point of view looks at X, what happens with X and uh, for every X, you must have a, a, a D and a Q0. While the strong rational definition says that for every D, <laughs> you can find a Q0 such that these relations implies X and I. So it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of perspective. And it's interesting that uh, we will conclude that strongly rational rings are the same as irrational rings. Okay. So now, why, um, why do we want to look at the strong rational property? First of all, it has an obvious connection to strong regular definition that. Lin Chuan and uh, Neil talked about, but also um, useful, it's very useful to proving this result, which is uh, established for reduced F finite rings. If you remember an F finite ring is by result of Gabor is an image of uh, F finite regular locker ring. So in this uh, theorem is, that's actually needed uh, to have R an image of um, Gorenstein ring basically, but regular would be enough. Anyway, so if you have a reduced a finite ring F rationality is the same as strong F rationality. Actually, that, that's true in general. The, the, I, I misstated this. So this hypothesis is necessary to prove that the F rational locus, which is the collection of prime ideas that uh, uh, P where R localized P is F rational, it's open in uh, Zariski topology. That's a very useful property to have the, the rational locus to be Zariski open. And that is true if the ring R is reduced and F finite. And as I said, proving that this locus is uh, open in the Zariski topology uh, uses the characterization of rationality via strong rational. Okay. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna prove the converse of that shortly. Now I like to mention uh, 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 a result about deformation of F rational rings. So if you have a local ring that is a homomorphic image of Koya Macaulay, and you have a non-zero divisor on R such that modulo it, you have an F rational ring, then the original ring is F rational. So I like to sketch the proof of this. Okay, this is useful. Sometimes uh, you can find such a non-zero divisor. And then if you mod out by it, you drop the dimension by one. So it might be easier to prove that uh, uh, R mod ZR is irrational. And then you get immediately that the original ring R is irrational. Okay, so um, let's take a look at um, how the proof goes here. So the quotient R more ZR is rational, therefore it's co macaulian and domain, okay? And also we get for, from co macaulay uh, theory that R itself is co macaulay because it's co macaulay modulo non-zero device, okay? So um, remember, because R more ZR is do a domain, that means that the principal ideal ZR is prime, okay? So now we can complete Z is an element of R, R is Koen Macaulay. So let's just uh, complete um, Z to a full system of parameters in R. 
Okay. So I want to show that this, the ideal that is generated by these elements is tightly closed. Okay. So uh, let's start with. The tight closure relation. So that means we can find C in R naught such that this happens for Q large enough. Okay. All right, so now because ZR is prime, we can. Um, write it in this form, D times a power of Z, okay? You can take powers of Z out of C as much as you can until D is not a power of Z. So uh, disregard the fact. So this D is an element of R. Uh, I know that I'm denoting then the index of the, how many elements are in the system of parameters by little D, but hopefully that wouldn't be confusing. Um, so now if you take, Q greater than T, then what do we have? The tight closure relation is this. Okay. Um, now, using the fact that we have a regular sequence, we can. Um, get here. Okay, you see, we can combine the powers of Z together and obtain the C times X to power Q belongs to that ideal. And now go mod ZR, modulo ZR, we have that the ring is irrational. okay? So what does that mean? It means that the image, so if you look at this relation, that gives you a tight closure relation in the quotient if you go mode Z. So the image of X is N the image of X to comma XD in R mode ZR because that was a, a rational. So what we get we get a ah, I'm sorry, I think there is a typo. Is it D to Z to the power T? Sorry? I, uh, is oh, it yes. D Z yes, to thank the you, thank you. I thank you, very is. important. I appreciate that. Uh, this D doesn't disappear when we go more Z, that's why it needs to be there. So we're using essentially this part. When we go more ZR, we need to have a tight closure relation in the quotient and this D is non-zero. Thank you very much for the comment, yes. So um, when you go in the in mode ZR, you have a tight closure relation. So the ima image of X has to be in the image of X to XD in R mode ZR. So that means that X itself is in the ideal generated by Z X to XD. And that uh, finishes the proof. Thank you. Um, so this is a very simple uh, proof that shows that the uh, rationality deforms. Uh, one should be aware that this is in contrast with other type of deformation uh, results for classes of rings in tight closure theory. Strong irregularity does not deform by an example by anorak thing. And in general, uh, F purity also doesn't deform. So um, uh, one has to be careful, but luckily F rationality does, does deform. Okay. All right, so uh, I, I'm gonna skip in the lecture notes. You can, I stated the result that uh, tells you what happens with irrational rings under faithfully flat maps. Basically, does the irrationality property uh, propagates to a ring uh, um, from R to S if you know that R is irrational? And the answer is yes, under certain conditions, which mean that the closed fiber of the, the, the morphism has to be nice in some way. So if you have that the closed fiber is, if you have a local uh, map between rings like this and the closed fiber is geometrically irrational, then irrationality does um, 
behave nicely and they're faithfully flat local maps. So I'm not going to state the result. I'm just going to indicate and let you know if you're interested. I include it there for completeness. All right, so now um, let's move to a different point of view about irrational rings, which is very important, and that's uh, in connection to local cohomology. Okay, so let's fix some notations. I'm just going to talk about local rings, the theorem. Dimension is D, and as before, x1 to xd um, denote a system of parameters. So oftentimes we're going to talk about Frobenius actions on modules. And a Frobenius action means a map that is additive and when you apply it to a R times M, R to what comes out is R to power P, okay? So that's a Frobenius action. And most of the time, the module that we're going to discuss is the highest local cohomology of the ring R with supporting the maximal ideal. And that's an Athenian ring. And I would like to recall how um, uh, one way of obtaining it. So uh, hopefully most of you have seen this. If not, I suggest you look in the, the, the monograph by Bruce and Herzog. They describe it very well there. So there is a check complex. Uh, for which it's um, uh, cohomologies are uh, the, the, the local cohomology of the ring R, okay? So um, okay. Uh, we're going to be mostly interested in the last one, okay, which comes from here. And um, because it's a, it's a quotient of R localized at X, where X is the product of X1 to XD modulo, um, uh, this last map in the check complex, we can denote an element in this fashion. Okay. And now one observation would be that the original Frobenius map that you have on the ring R is obviously exists on all these localizations of R at various elements. And therefore it's also compatible with direct sums. So you will have a natural Frobenius action induced by the original Frobenius on each of these modules in this check complex. Therefore you have a Frobenius action on the cohomologies. Therefore you have a natural Frobenius action on the local cohomology modules, okay? Well, what does this Frobenius action, if you track everything down, how does that uh, work on this element eta? It basically raises z to power p and underline x to s times p, okay? So that's how the Frobenius map works, okay? Now, so that's one description of the check, uh, uh, sorry, of the, the, the local cohomology. Another one, another description that is useful for, I'm gonna do this for the, the, the highest local cohomology only, is using a direct system of maps obtained in the following way. Take the quotients R mod X1 to power T, uh, XD to power T, multiply by X, Remember, x is the product. x underline is the product of all these elements, x1 to xd. And you end up in, uh, so you can construct this map uh, with uh, codomain r mod x1 to power t plus 1, xd to power t plus 1. Um, so this is organized in a direct system. So you can obtain um, the the direct limit of the system is known to be the highest local cohomology of the ring R uh, with support in the maximal ideal, okay? Um, so we can construct um, the, this local cohomology module as a direct limit, okay? Now, uh, a few observations here. Um, one observation would be that 
when the ring R is core McCauley, all these maps are injected. This comes from the regular sequence of the property X, uh, of, the, of the system of parameters X1 to X3. So this map will be injective is R is core McCauley. And you can think of uh, the, the, the highest local cohomology as a direct union, basically, of this type of uh, uh, rings. You just have to realize that the transition maps are multiplications by this X underline. Okay. Uh, so now with this description, you can tell that if you have two um, sequences of parameters on a coin macaulay ring, one J, let's say X1 to XD and Y, Y1 to YD, then one can find an injection. I used this in a, a, a previous theorem from R mod J into R mod I1 to power T, ID to power T. And the reason is as following. R mod J here, can, J can be used to define the, the, the local cohomology, right? So this definition that it, it uh, provided is independent of the choice of system of parameters. So if you use in the definition, the elements X1 to XD to get uh, local cohomology, that's one way. So R mod J injects into this local cohomology. But on the other hand, if you use the other system of parameters, this local cohomology is a directed union, if you want, of this, uh, of modules like this. So for T large enough, you can find this to embed into one of those because this right-hand side is what gives you the local cohomology for T large enough, okay, as a, as a directed union. So that's a different point of view and it's a different way of uh, finishing the result that I stated earlier. Okay. So we have these two, two descriptions for the highest local cohomology. One remark here, if the ring R is square Macaulay, we only have one uh, non-zero local cohomology, uh, the one uh, level D, okay? So this would be important for coin Macaulay ring. And if you remember, uh, F-rational rings are coin Macaulay. So when you talk about F-rational rings, you truly have just one non-zero local cohomology module supporting the maximum idea, okay? All right. So. One important result that uh, uh, I didn't get to, and you could say that it should be, you know, is one of the main things about uh, F rationality, is that in the presence of the Gorenstein property, then an F rational ring is the same as a weakly F regular ring. And to, to recall what the weakly F regular means, um, means that tight closure of every ideal is itself. Okay. So, the example that I uh, worked with before that hypersurface hypersurface x square um, plus uh, y cube plus z uh, fifth uh, that's a hypersurface therefore is a Gorenstein ring. So for example, uh, that type of result would, would, would uh, uh, that type of ring would be where uh, a theorem like this would apply. So we proved it's a rational therefore that ring is in fact weakly of regular as soon as we, we see a proof of this theorem. Okay, so let's let's take a look how does the proof go. So um, we can localize here and we can assume that R is local. The reason that is, is because um, uh, weak level regularity can be checked in the presence of Gorenstein. You can, uh, you can uh, localize the maximal ideals. So we're, we're using Gorenstein there. So Using that reduction, we can assume that the ring is local in Gorenstein. So um, let's assume, let's show that every ideal is tightly closed. If R is a rational. Okay. If the ring is weakly regular, it's automatically rational. So you want the converse. Okay, so how do we prove that if we, if we know that the ring is irrational, how do we prove that every ideal is tightly closed? Now, a standard reduction in tight closure theory tells you that when you start, um, if you want to prove that every ideal is tightly closed, it's enough to look at m primary ideals. If you can prove that. Uh, I is, uh, 
for an n-primary ideal, i is tightly closed, then it will follow that every other ideal is tightly closed. And the, the reason is because in, in the presence of test elements, the tight closure of an ideal i uh, can be written as the intersection of the tight closure of i plus the maximum ideal power n. And you take the the tight closure of those ideals and you take the intersection over all uh, n. Okay. So there is this little trick that allows you to reduce to n primary ideals. All right. So we need to show that every n primary ideal is tightly closed. Okay. So now, because the ideal is n primary, it means that this is Artinian, R mod i. So Every Artinian module can be embedded in a direct sub, sum um, of copies of the injective hull. Actually, you can also complete the ring. I forgot to say that. So we can uh, have a nice matrix duality going on. So every Artinian ring can be uh, embedded in a direct sum of in, um, injective hulls of the residue field. And when the ring is Gorenstein, we know. That the injective hull is um, the same as the highest local cohomology. Okay, and the lock. If you remember the the one of the the, the way of, we described the, the local cohomology was as a direct limit of ideas like this and. Uh, in this direct system, the maps are injective because the ring is Gorenstein, therefore Cohen McCall. Okay. So now this is an Artinian ring. Okay. It's also an Artinian, right? So in fact, in air, in this injection, you can uh, uh, re replace each copy. Of the highest local cohomology by some quotient like this. Okay. For T large enough. Okay. So now zero is tightly closed in here. We know that the ring is irrational, right? So every ideal generated by a system of parameters is, is, is irrational. Therefore, if you look at, in the module R mod x1 to power t, x d to power t, zero as a sum module is tightly closed in this, in this. So therefore, zero is tightly closed in the direct sum. That we have here. Okay, well, so therefore, zero will be tightly closed in R mod I. Okay, because if you have an injection and zero is tightly closed in the bigger ring, then zero will be tightly closed in R mod I. So that means that I equals I star here. Okay, so you can look at this proof and realize that this proof is, it's, like one of the reasons you can ask, why do we need tight closure for modules? Okay. And this proof is an example. Because if you look what we did, we actually use module theory, right? So in embedded R mod I, we look at the, the question about whether I equals I star for an N primary ideal. And we convert it from ideals to R mod I as a module. And we embedded that in a direct sum of copies of the injective hull using the fact that the injective hull is the, hull is the same as the local cohomology, we replace each copy of the injective hull by one copy of this form, R mod x1 to power t, x d to power t. So now we rephrased everything as we notice that zero is tightly closed in this direct sum of modules. And because it's tightly closed in this direct sum of modules, it's tightly closed in every sum module that injects into it. 
In particular, it's tightly closed in armored eye. And if you rephrase what that means, it means that I equals I star. So for example, this would, would be a reason why uh, it's useful to consider, one of the many reasons why it's useful to consider uh, uh, tight closure for modules as well. All right. So now we know that for Gorenstein rings, every rationality is the same as weak every regular item. All right, so I'd like to um, finish in the last five minutes uh, of, of this lecture two with uh, a proof of the fact that um, an F rational ring is actually strongly F rational, a strongly F rational. Okay, so um, let's set up the, the, the notations for that. So I'm starting with an F rational ring. I want to show it's strongly F rational, and I'm going to denote x1 to xd uh, to be the the system of parameters, and I'm going to take C, an element not containing any middle of prime, and I index T as being the idea generated by x1 to power T, xd to power T. Okay. Um, all right, so we're assuming that the ring is irrational. So under these conditions, I'm claiming that for this C that I have, there is a Q0 such that uh, this map, R mod I uh, power bracket T, into R1 over Q modulo IT times uh, R1 over Q, that sends one into C to power one over Q is injective, okay? So basically, uh, if you think about it, we know that this map is injective for I because the ring is ever rational. We wanna show it's injective for every um, um, ideal of the form IT. So the, the, the crucial part is this, this map you know is injective for a given C and a given I. In this theorem, this Q0 is independent on T. That's the claim, okay? So if you fix I T, there is a Q0, but you want a Q0 that works for every T, okay? The only thing that is fixed here is the system of parameters at the beginning, okay? So uh, this, again, I'm, I'm, I don't have time, so I'm gonna skip the, the proof of this. It's not uh, uh, trivial, but it's not very complicated either. So um, it just uses the fact that um, we can understand the cycle of an L of a of a uh, ring like uh, of a module like this. R mod it is. Okay, so if you look at the injectivity of this map, you can look trace it back to circle, what happens to circles, and then um, using some uh, neat arguments about um, uh, Athenian modules, basically, you can uh, you can show show that there is a Q zero that works for all p. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, move on from here. So we know that. Um, uh, there is a Q0 that works for all these uh, ideals IT, okay? Now, the second part is to, 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 to get from here that, um, in fact, this map at local cohomology modules is injective. So I have a, a rational ring. I wanna show that there is a Q0 such that for every Q greater or equal than Q0, the map at the level of local cohomology modules that is given by multiplication by C to the power one over Q is injective, okay? So now the, the, the proof here, um, the proof here boils down to this diagram. So on the vertical, I have the direct system. The map at the bottom is the map that I care about. And um, Okay, 
so so basically the previous result allows me to find a q0 that makes all these maps injective at every level in the direct system okay that, that's why it was important for the q0 that i chose previously produces all these horizontal maps for every t to be injective well the bottom map is a consequence of these uh, uh, horizontal maps so you will get to get the injectivity propagate at the very last line okay and then um let's see do i have um, if i can just use a minute to finish uh, this is that yeah okay? i think so i think so yeah go ahead thank you <clears throat> So finally, how do we use all this to show that if rationality implies strong if rationality? <clears throat> so R is a domain, so it's enough to take C non-zero, okay? And we need to show that if I is parameter ideal, then there exists Q0 such that for all Q greater or equal than Q0, this map, Is injective. That's what we want. Okay. Uh, we need to realize that we prove this. Uh, this follows immediately from every rationality for full system of parameters. How do you do it for um, partial system of parameters? Okay. So let's say that I is generated by x1 through xk, where k is less than the dimension. Okay, we're gonna complete the sequence to a full sequence of parameters. And as before, we're gonna take the n powers for n greater or equal than zero. Okay. For the C that we have, the, the local cohomology result shows that there exists a Q0 such that for all q greater or equal than q0 the map at the level of local cohomologies is injective okay all right so now For that, for any Q greater or equal than Q0, you have the maps that we we'll care about. All right, so these are injective. This is injective and this is injective. It means that this is injective, okay? So that means that if you have any time you have something like this, you're gonna get that X is in I, okay? So now if you take, not D, sorry, C. If you take C times X to the power Q in I bow bracket Q, you get that C X to the power Q is in I N by natural inclusion. Okay. And you get that X is in I N by this, by this observation. So in fact, X has to be in all, the intersection of all I N, but there's just I. Okay. All right. So uh, this proves that uh, strongly, uh, uh, sorry, that an average rational ring is strongly average rational. Okay. So I'm going to stop here for my second lecture. And uh, I guess we're going to have a quick break. Uh, let's see. Uh, are there any quick questions? 
buffering 